Does God pay any attention to us? I've been pondering a couple of scriptures lately, and I just wanted to share them with you. This is from the Old Testament, Zephaniah. And it says here, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Well, will he do good or will he do evil? It's very interesting that I've been thinking about these scriptures and wanting to share them. And on the news channel, I heard a politician from New York say, you're not going to get any help from heaven. Well, I was shocked. Does the world really think they're not getting any help from heaven? And is it because they don't see it? Or they don't believe it? Let me read to you another one from the Old Testament. And then we'll kind of look at it. This is Psalm 94. They utter speech and speak insolent things. All the workers of iniquity boast in themselves. They break in pieces your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and the murderer and murder the fatherless. Yet they say the Lord does not see, nor does the God of Jacob understand or pay attention. Is God paying attention? Does he know what's going on? And then down a little further, it says, Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. So is he instructing us? Is he teaching us? Is he showing us the way? Sometimes we think in our day where our prayers aren't answered. Are you listening, God? What's happening? Have you been there yourself? Or why does God answer for other people and not for me? I'd like to give you a few points that I think about that we've all sat under some very bad teaching. And any teaching that elevates man above God is not correct. Don't pay any attention to it. We don't command God to do anything. We don't demand God to do anything. We don't have any rights. Our only right is that we should have gone to hell and we aren't. God is sovereign and he acts as he wills. Yes, he answers prayer. The way I see it, and it's got to be different for all of us, is for me, I come alongside him. I want to agree with what he agrees with. But we want what we want when we want it. <laughs> yes. Um, there's a beautiful Old Testament scripture. It says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that shall never be moved. And that's Psalm 125. And it's talking about when this age ends, when the earth is changed, it's going to be burnt with fire, you know. It's going to be turned upside down. It's going to go through a lot of havoc to be renewed and start again. Only Mount Zion, Moriah, won't move. The rest of the planet will. So the Lord is saying, those of us, those who trust in him, are like that immovable mountain that will withstand the cosmos shaking. So, are we trusting him? Or are we demanding? Are we expecting? Are, what are we thinking? What are we feeling? Do we call out to God when we want answers? Yes, we do. We need help. We need answers. We need understanding. And I have no way am I going to tell you why prayers are answered and why they're not. Because that isn't the point even. It isn't. 
Are we drawing closer to him? Are we getting to know him? Is he a God that you can talk to? Is he mean? Is he out beyond somewhere? For me, when I understood that he chose to come and dwell within me, yes, the God of the universe dwells within me and he can with you. And by the way, that's the only prayer I have found that he will always, always answer with the positive. You ask for him, you ask for the spirit of God to dwell in you, that will happen. It says, well, I, uh, will I give my son a stone when he asks for bread? And that's what that's talking about. Will I not give myself to you if you ask for it? That will be answered. Yes. And also, maybe what you're asking, maybe what I'm asking, and it's the immediate things in our life, isn't it? A job, health, this and that. We need help. And who else can we go to? Even Peter said, Lord, where else would we go but to you? And Peter thought about it. So, uh, you know, uh, where else would I go but to you, Lord? But it's important. And the scriptures are telling about people don't believe God does a thing. And then when I heard that uh, 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 um, person on television say, don't look for any help from heaven. <laughs> I'm looking for help from heaven. God of the universe is with us, and he loves us. Um, maybe he's working on drawing you to him. Maybe he wants to heal your soul. Maybe he wants to heal your broken, wounded spirit. Maybe he wants to heal your physical body. But all of it is for his glory. All of it is draw, to draw attention to him. What did Jesus do when he walked and he healed and he drove out the demons and he did all those things? To show forth himself. Is that not possibly what all the great religious movements through history have been? Remember in 1900, a great move of healing swept through. Was it not to draw attention to him? Remember the charismatic renewal and the Jesus movement, the Zusa Street? Were they not all attention getters to draw people to him? And they did. Did they stay? Did they listen to some false teaching and it didn't work? Their prayers weren't answered the way they wanted them to, so they left. Very interesting thought that we need to uh, examine. God does not fail. My perception of him may be off. My understanding of what prayer is might be off. But whether it is or not, we still need to go to him, don't we? We have no other, we have no other hope. And I'm so sorry for that politician that he doesn't look for any help from heaven. <laughs> if I hadn't had the help from heaven all my life, I don't know where I would be. How about you? <laughs> So maybe those moments of God were that, and maybe we're not going to have any more, because why? We might be on the verge of the end of the dispensation called grace, and we're getting ready to move into another time zone. Troubles are coming, we see it all around, but it's not about learning to get back to God and make our country back to God. It's about maybe the Christians taking a more intimate examination, an intimate time with the Lord. Maybe instead of these great revivals, he's working now individually with each of his believers, drawing them to himself, drawing to them to a maturity. I could be wrong. We'll see. It seems to me like it's a time where we're in this time of the, the great deception and the, the great time of falling away of believers. If God's purposes are for them to be mature enough to withstand, to be ready, to be called up to glory, whatever is coming. I'm just saying that. That's my, my thinking. 
I think there's a lot of Christians now that are hoping for great revivals in the future, but there, there aren't any in Scripture. There aren't any great awakenings coming. There aren't any great revivals coming. There's great falling away coming. Read your Bibles. When you hear pastors and teachers tell you, tell you something, including me, go look it up. Find out. Don't just throw it away. I know people that have prayed and asked for healing and they didn't receive it and they turned from God. He loves you. He's your friend. Your false teaching is what's been the problem. He's faithful. Trust in him. And whether we receive healing or not, we stand with the Lord, right? Whether we get out of a mess or not, we stand with the Lord. And believe it or not, he's working actively in your life every day. And for the lost, he is busy about it. Yes, his spirit is hovering over the earth. Remember that it hovered over, over earth at the beginning of creation. He's there busy about his work. We can trust him for these things. Can't we? Can we? Can we believe in healing even though we don't get healed? Can we believe in deliverance even though we don't see it? Can we draw unto God even though we don't feel it? Because my Bible says if I draw unto God, he will draw unto me. Trust it. Try it out. Draw close to him. No, you don't know how. Who knows how? I stood in front of a picture of Jesus years ago and I said, Lord, how do I get close to you? How do I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? How do I get to know you in my heart? I got no answers. But it happened. It happened. It happened. So be at peace, beloved. God hears and God answers. Not necessarily to our selfish prayers, but he's working all things out. And I, I, I'm the one, one, uh, 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 only one that says God, that doesn't say the words God is in control because God is allowing darkness to reign here to this time. God has allowed Satan activity in our lives. God has allowed us to do stupid things, sinful things. But he still loves us. He still draws us. He wants to call us to him. But yes, in the Old Testament, it says in the ironic blessing that your countenance would shine upon us. That means turn your face toward us, O oh God. We're pleading with you to turn your face toward us and hear us. In other words, we're wanting to repent of that which separates us from him. We're to take on his nature. Find us all over in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You'll find who he's, what he's like if he's there. Thank you for listening. Does God hear? Does he pay any attention to mankind? Most people don't think so. But we can. We can know. We can know he cares. If we never see a miracle, we know they're there. But we do see them. Life changed. Every time somebody repents, it's a great miracle. On and on. Rise up, beloved, and shine for him.